guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Fueled by Insanity. That's right, Fueled by Insanity is back. And this time we're going down the reject route because apparently Tracy's route has gotten quite a bit of uh quite a bit of work done. So we're gonna go down that one, pick Tracy, and see just where it leads us. Anyway, go ahead and join me, y'all. Let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Yes. Alright, reject. I ignore his hand, just like before. I don't want to agree to something unless I fully know what I'm getting into. Something still, feel, still feels off. His offer sounds too good to be true, but... He refused to give me a direct answer when I asked what he needed help with. He said it's not dangerous, but that still doesn't tell me what exactly he wants from me. I may have given up a chance at freeing Caleb, both from his prison and also from his curse, but... I've got my own freedom. I can figure this out myself. Besides, if he really is as benevolent as he says, why did he force me to go through that horrible nightmare last night? Nightmare. That's right. This is all just a nightmare. This is a bad dream, nothing more. I've had a few back I've had a few back to back now, but that doesn't mean anything. I've been stressed, that's all. I see. I take a step back, afraid of what's to come. Even if this is all a nightmare, I'm still terrified of him. There's no way he's not mad at me. I prepare for the worst. I prepare for him to yell at me. I prepare for him to attack me. Hell, I prepare I prepare for him to drown me again. But he isn't doing that. <clears throat> Not yet, at least. He looks upset, but if anything, he looks hurt by my rejection. At least I think he does. It's difficult to tell, as his expression goes back to neutral soon after. I suppose I cannot force you to accept my help if you don't desire it. It's a shame, really. We both could have benefited. But this is a dream. What was that? This is just a dream. Nothing that happens here matters. When I wake up, it'll all be gone. You aren't real. That wasn't Caleb that I saw earlier. Everything you're telling me, it isn't real. Caleb isn't going to be breaking out of prison. I don't have to worry about that. He's not going to chase me or anyone else down to try and kill us. The prison guards know what they're doing. This is all just my mind trying to scare me. I don't believe any of it for a second. You aren't real! Interesting. You believe me to be a figment of your imagination. If that's the reason you rejected my offer, then perhaps all I need to do is convince you. Convince me? What does he mean by that? If something happens in a dream, then it should stay confined within that dream, correct? Nothing in the outside world should be affected. That's what you've just told me. Where's he going with this? Yeah. Oh, God, that is a... Oh, boy, that is a uh, threatening-looking stare if I've ever seen one. He takes one step forward, a horrid smile emerging on his face. So then, anything I do to you here, assuming I'm not real, should not matter at all, because it won't affect anything once you wake up. That is your theory. Correct? I take a step back, worried about what he's insinuating. Uh, yeah? And you're sure of this? I take another step back, but he mar but he matches it with his own. I, uh... He continues to match my movements, closing the distance between us ever so slightly with each step we take. What's wrong? You don't seem as confident suddenly. Stop. Hmm? Stop, please, you're scaring me. Oh, am I? I take a quick glance behind me, debating whether or not I should attempt to make a run for it. Sure didn't help last time, but... He said he wasn't here to hurt me. Be brave, Jeffrey. This is just a dream. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, a lot of bad things can happen in dreams. I stop my movements and stare at him, allowing him to walk right up to me. Maybe I'm being stupid, I don't know. You aren't going to hurt me. You said you wouldn't. He stops only a foot or two in front of me, his eyes piercing through mine, a creepy grin never leaving his face. You're right. I did say that I'm not here to hurt you. To my surprise, he pulls me into a hug, though the way he goes about it makes me feel really uncomfortable. He's made sure to position his shoulder under my muzzle, near my throat, so that I can't turn my head very far. I can't see him from this position. I try to back away, but he's holding onto me firmly. I feel exposed and defenseless like this. But this way is more fun. I don't like this. I'm scared. What is he doing? What do you... Before I can react, a sharp, stinging pain shoots down my back. It feels like he's managed to claw straight through my shirt and flesh in one go. I shout out in pain, but he simply laughs in response. Ah, stop! Let go! But he doesn't. He continues to hold on, his claw repeatedly scratching the skin underneath my fur in the same spot. Stop! 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 Please stop! It hurts! I instinctively start hitting his back, the only thing I can think of to do, to try to get him to let go, but it doesn't even phase him. Take any water time. This is the Tracy Root, so...
I'm not strong. I've never been good at fighting back. I'm so damn useless. Suddenly, he speaks in a low voice right into my ear. Wake up. I jolt up from my sleep, pulling the blanket up with me. I'm shaking. I can't stop shaking. I look beside me at Ted, who was in contrast to sleeping so peacefully. I'm half surprised I didn't end up waking him. Everything felt so real. I'm still breathing at a rapid rate, still in shock of what just happened. I hate these dreams. I hate them so much. My back, it, it still hurts. Why does my back still hurt? I reach, my, I reach my hand around to touch what feels like claw marks. It stings as I touch it, like I've got fr like I've got a fresh open wound there. No. No, this can't be real. That was just a dream. I bring my hand in front of me, afraid of what I'm seeing. Afraid of what it means. Blood. He's real. Oh, fuck. That means I've messed up. I've made him mad. I... I need to calm down. I need to calm down. I need to calm down. It's fine. I I'll be fine. I just need to figure out what to do. I, I can do this on my own. I just... I slide out of bed as quietly as I can. Careful not to wake up Ted. I don't want him to see me like this. I don't want anyone to see me like this. I just need space. I make my way to the living room and find the light already on. I must have forgotten to turn it off last night, or someone else forgot to. I don't even remember who went to bed last. Who went to bed last? I head on over to the couch and lie down on my side, too tired still to want to sit up. I need sleep. There's no way in hell that I can have, can after that. I'm I'm alone. I have to deal with him alone. I don't I don't know what to do. I wish I wasn't alone. I wish none of this ever happened. I wish I never went into that stupid cave. I wish Kajuro would get out of my fucking dreams. I'm curled up, tightly hugging one of the pillows, trying to stop myself from shaking, trying to take my mind off of it. I need to do something. I, I can't live like this. I'm I'm afraid to go to sleep. He's real. He's... Oh, fuck. Does that mean everything he said is real, too? I is Caleb really going to come back and kill me? I need to leave. I need to get away from here. I can't let him find me. But if I do, would he hurt someone else instead? Would Darren be safe? Sean? Marshall? Ted? Tracy? Should I tell someone what's happening? Maybe... Maybe they can help. But if I tell someone about these dreams, about Caleb, I'd have to tell them everything. Everything I've been hiding these past two years. What do I do? Oh. Uh, you get a choice here as well. Okay. Uh, I'll tell somebody. I tell some, I'll tell somebody. I have to. I can't do this on my own, but I'm not alone. Not if I want to be me. I mean, not if I don't want to be. I need help, so I'll get help. Who should I go to? Who do I feel okay with telling? So you, oh wow, so you have the option of just selecting pretty much everybody. Let's do Tracy. Tracy. She doesn't know them. She never met them. I can't tell Darren or Marshall or Sean because they'd kill me if they knew what I've been hiding. They'd never be able to look at me the same. I don't want to involve Ted. He has nothing to do with any of this. I'm not as close to Tracy, so I have less to lose with her. I take in a deep breath. I've made up my mind, but there's only one problem. I need to get my phone. I look over towards the door to my room. It's in there, but so is Ted. I might accidentally wake him up if I go back in there, but I don't have a choice, do I? Here goes nothing. <laughs> I sneak in as quietly as I can. Thankfully, that's something I'm actually good at. I avoid looking at Ted. I don't want him to see... I don't want to see him right now. I'm afraid that if I look, he'll know somehow. Without a second thought, I grab my phone and head out. I sit down on the couch and check my phone. It's four in the morning. If it was someone else, I'd be afraid to disturb them, but Tracy's a night owl. At least that's what I seem to recall. It's like, you know, water time. The ticking of the monstrous clock. I open the text menu and tap on Tracy's name. I close my eyes for a few short moments before typing out a message. Jeffrey. I'm like, Tracy, are you awake? Three seconds go by and my heart already begins to race. What if she doesn't know she needs to respond? Answer, please. It's important, please. I wait only half a minute of no response before I decide that texting isn't good enough. So I back out to my contacts menu and press call. It rings. And it rings some more. It keeps ringing. Come on, pick up! I shout. It's not too loud, but it's loud enough that I worry I may have awoken someone. Shit! Just then I finally get an answer. H hello Her voice startles me enough that I nearly dropped my phone. I'm about to reply, but then realize it would be best if I went outside instead. That way nobody will hear. Now that I'm outside, I speak. Tracy, I need your help. I don't know who else to ask. Tracy's voice replies in a calm, almost soothing tone. What do you need help with? I'm not safe. I need somewhere to go. Something's... 
I keep having these nightmares, and I'm afraid to, and I'm afraid to go back to sleep because they won't go away. Well, what kind of nightmares? I want to tell her about Kaizuro, but if I do, that's just going to make things worse. It's because of a curse. And not to me, that, but these nightmares won't let me forget. I'm afraid of that. I trail off when my ears twitch. I just hear something inside? Am I going crazy? Please just be my imagination. Roll that back. You said a curse, right? Yes. Can you describe it? Describe it? Yeah, like, what is it? Is it an object? Is it a, on a person? Are there any effects? Uh, it... I paused, trying to figure out what to even say. I wasn't expecting questions as specific. It's... it's on my friend. It happened two years ago. It made his eyes red, then he killed one of my other friends, and then... Red eyes, you say? Yes. Do you know where your friend is? Prison. He can't control himself. Gotcha. Have you told anyone else about this? No. I'm gonna call my boss, okay? Your boss? What does he do? Don't worry about it right now. Do you have anywhere you need to be tonight? No. Why? I'll meet you at the lab. It'll be easier to talk there. Lab? What's going on? Well, it's not really a lab. This is what Blake calls it. Do you need a ride? Uh, okay. See you soon. Tracy hangs up and I left amused by the call that just took place. I expected her to be confused and not understand anything I was saying, but she did somehow? Did I just luck out with who I told, or am I going to regret this? I shiver both from the cold air out cold air out here and also out of fear and anxiety about the whole situation. Not wanting to stand out here much longer, I head back inside. I step back inside and let out a deep breath. In one way, I feel relieved to know I might be getting help. In another, I'm even more anxious than before. That went way smoother than I expected it to. I mean, I guess she didn't know either Parker or Caleb, so she's not as affected as anyone else would have been. She's been around a lot less than the rest of us. I'm still worried that I didn't get a chance to tell her about Kajoro. I don't even know how that will go down. Something tells me it won't be difficult to convince her. I'm about to head over and sit on the couch when I hear the sound of running water in the kitchen. It's not long before the sound stops. Crap! Someone's awake! So it wasn't my imagination earlier. I don't want to be seen right now. I don't want anyone to ask questions, but I need to know who it is. I walk on over to the kitchen. Ted? Ah! Ted gets startled and drops a plastic cup on the floor. Thankfully, it was empty, so nothing spilled out. Excuse me. Sorry, uh, you scared me. Oh, excuse me. What are you doing awake? I heard you shout. When I woke up, you weren't there. Crap, so I did wake someone up. One second, y'all. It is water time. I hope you didn't hear. I heard your conversation. What? What did you hear? Something about one of your friends being in prison for, a uh, murder? I think that's what you said, at least. And you said something else about a curse, too. Uh, you weren't supposed to hear any of that. Well, I did. It's just, you were gone and I got worried. Then I heard you outside and, uh, got curious. Why can't you just mind your own business? Sorry. I won't tell anyone, I promise. Um, you're going somewhere, right? Can I go with you? Excuse me? There's some stuff I've been needing to talk to someone about. I've just been too afraid to. Huh? I, uh, I need some time to collect my thoughts. Sorry about this. Fine. Maybe it'll be nice to have you with me. Ah! Both Ted and I get startled by a knock at the front door. Ted and I walk to the front door and answer it. No, oh, in steps a short, uninvited chinchilla. Uh, Mr. J uh, Mr. Jeffrey, I presume. My name is Blake. Pleasure to meet you. He holds out a hand as if expecting me to shake. Seeing as I don't know him, I decline. He withdraws his hand. This is the right house, is it not? You match Tracy's description. Oh, are you Tracy's boss? That is correct. You are... Ted, sir. Will you be coming with us? I was only told about Jeffrey. Yeah, I am. In that case, let's go, shall we? How did you get here so fast? I live nearby. Now let's go. We still need to pick up Tracy. Okay. As soon as we get into Blake's car, I zone out. Tonight's been so overwhelming, and it's only just barely started. I have a strong urge to go to sleep. I know I could easily nap a nap on the way on the nap on the way there, but I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to now. I barely pay attention to when we pick Tracy up. I think I say hi. Ted might say hi too. Once we get to the place, I step out of the car alongside everyone else and go in. I take a look around. There are shelves of books, jars, boxes, creepy-looking rocks, and various figurines. There's a computer screen open to some sort of web page about some kind of powder. Or something like that. I'm not sure what that's about. Well, this is it. Welcome to the Paranormal Research Lab. Lab? How's this a lab? It looks nothing like one. 
No shit, but that's what my boss calls it. Blake walks up and huffs. This isn't exactly a booming business, miss. Uh, go with what I've got. Work with me here. Oh, and do you mind your language in front of clients? They aren't clients, they're my friends. Oh, moving on. Jeffrey, was it? Yes? Could I ask you to give me details of your problems? Not problems, that's not the right word. Uh, situation. No, it's not your situation. Oh, hell, I don't know what to call it. Language, Mr. Boss Man. And Blake glares at Tracy for her comment. Anyway, you know what I mean. I would like to know what happened, so please, give us the scoop. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Excellent. It's creepy seeing everyone stare at me as I await what I'm about to say. I have to tell the truth, no matter how bad it will make me look. I avoided this for so long. Alright, y'all, and I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye